Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're gonna to have a look at using the Pixar Bake Texture Node. Basically, you use this to bake uh, procedural textures down to a UV layout. So you could um, either edit them externally or just so you can save computing time at the time of render. Uh, this is good if you're doing big batch renders for animation and that sort of thing. Or you've just got a complex scene and you want it to render out a bit quickly. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a, just for this example, a cube and we're going to go to the RenderMan shelf and then we're also going to create a Pixar environment shader, uh, environment light rather, and a Pixar surface shader and assign it to that cube. For this to work, we do need to have a UV layout for our mesh. So I'm going to go up to UVs. I'm just going to use auto UVs for this. Um, obviously, if you've created custom UVs, it works the exact same, but you will need a UV layout. Next, let's go to the Hypershade editor. We'll select the surface shader that we just created and map it out. Then I'm just gonna create a procedural node. So I'm gonna use a fractal. So hit tab, type in fractal, and then just expand that using the three key, run the result RGB into your diffuse color. Now, if we IPR this, you'll see that it's applied the fractal to our cube. Now, so let's bake this down so it's a two dimensional texture. So to do so, we'll hit tab and we'll type bake. And we're going to create a Pixar Bake Texture node. And what you want to do is have this at the end of your chain. So if you had a complex shading network and you were using this for a texture, at the very end of your chain, you'd run the result RGB into the input RGB and then the out RGB from the Bake Texture node into your diffuse color. So the first thing we need to do is create a file name destination. So in your project folder, you'll notice that you've got a file name images. So I'm just going to use the images folder. Um, so I'm going to type images slash and then I'm going to call this fractal1.exr because this is going to be an EXR output. Um, the atlas style just depends on what type of UV mapping um, algorithm you want to use. If you're planning on going to ZBrush or Mudbox or Mari, you'd want to use one of those. Otherwise, none was fine if you're just going to keep staying in Maya. Um, bake mode enabled. Render mode automatic is fine. File type, you can just leave it at that. OpenEXR is the file format that we're using. If you wanted to use a TIFF, you could obviously change that to a .tiff output. And the data type, if you wanted this to be 32-bit, you'd change it to float. Half is 16-bit. Um, and then the comp uh, compression is just OpenEXR is fine. Then you've got your resolution. Let's say, um, call this 1024 by 1024, because it's a UV layout, you want that to be even. And, um, and leave the two bottom fields as they are. So now, if we jump back into the viewport, we'll go up to the render man dropdown and we're gonna click bake render. And it's just gonna spool up the, uh, the queue like it would normally do for any batch render. And then you'll see it will start computing through and then it's done. So let's jump into our project folder. So this is my project folder for this scene. If you haven't already created one for your scene, this obviously won't work. It will probably go to your default project folder, um, but obviously with any scene, you want to have already created a project and find this, um, the project for that scene. So I've got the images folder there and you'll see that I've got the fractal1.exr. So if I open that, you'll see that it's created that UV layout. Um, the same as what the the cube had. So each one of these squares represents one of the faces on the cube. So now instead of using that procedural, uh, we can just type in PXR texture, grab a PXR texture node, delete these two procedurals, uh, this, the procedural node and the baking node, plug the result RGB into the diffuse color, then open up our PXR fractal, fractal EXR. And now when we render it, it's going to render out from this image instead of computing the uh, procedural. Uh, thank you to Samuel Elmo, Elmo for uh, requesting this tutorial. I hope it helped and I hope it helps everyone else out there that was looking to do this. Um, if it did, make sure you click the like button uh, so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of uh, these sorts of tutorials every week for products like Render Man and other CG products. If you want to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.